नमस्कार वेलकम टू माय ट्यूटोरियल्स ऑन मटेरियल्स मॉडलिंग विद क्वांटम एस्प्रेसो एंड इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी विल लर्न हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द बैंड स्ट्रक्चर एंड डेंसिटी ऑफ स्टेट्स ऑफ द टू डी मटेरियल ग्राफीन डिस्कवर्ड इन 2004 ग्राफीन वाज द फर्स्ट टू डायमेंशनल मटेरियल्स एंड इट हैज वेरी नोवेल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एंड ऑप्टिकल प्रॉपर्टीज एंड इफ समबडी इज इंटरेस्टेड इन डूइंग मटेरियल्स मॉडलिंग स्पेशली इन 2D मटेरियल्स then this is one of the starting examples uh, we deal with so uh, for this tutorial we will uh, keep it very short and uh, for that purpose uh, i have already downloaded the uh, graphical user interface uh, burai uh, that is a free software and uh, it is a cross platform software so it can be used with uh, windows mac os x and also with uh, ubuntu linux so uh, i am using here a windows platform and uh, you can get it from this website uh, you can download it and install this it's a free software so basically the engine of calculation is quantum espresso which is a plane wave density functional theory software and uh, now we will uh, proceed uh, to see how uh, to calculate the band structure of uh, two dimensional graphene uh so for that purpose i have already uh, as you can see on my desktop i have downloaded uh, the cif file which is a uh, format standard format of a structure file uh, in material science so i have uh, the graphene cif file uh, in my desktop and i will launch the burai gui and with this gui uh, the quantum espresso engine comes pre installed and it is uh, using uh, the interface uses javascript so make sure you have java installed on your uh, desktop before you download the software so uh, so this is the home screen and uh, from here we can go into uh, the folder where i have my uh, cif file that is the structure file so i will uh, go to this my computer and i'll point to the directory where my uh, file is so it is stored in the desktop and here i see gr.cif this is the file of uh, graphene and i will just select and double click on this file so now we have uh, come to the coding window and here we have a uh, lot of choices and options if you look at this uh, bottom right hand side you have this geometry and uh, on there on the right of that there is a button and you can see different type of uh, options are showing the geometry scf optimize md uh, which is molecular dynamics you have density of states the dos uh, bands uh, to calculate the band structure NEB uh, for the you know, noise elastic band uh, time dependent dft phonon uh, calculation so you can do a, a whole lot of calculations with espresso but that is uh, something to deal with uh, in a different tutorial so quantum espresso you can uh, also download uh, in a stand alone fashion and if you are working on linux platform especially most probably that's what you will be doing uh and it also has its own uh, very good documentation uh, but uh, why i am using a gui is for beginners uh, it is uh, very uh, useful to have a graphical user interface uh, in any kind of uh, materials modeling studies so here we see that uh, we have this uh, the cif file of graphene and we can see the two carbon atoms this is a unit cell and we see the hexagonal unit cell uh, the cell is shown with this borders so i i can you can maximize minimize the cell to see where the atoms are so uh, if you look at uh, espresso uh, it is mostly uh, the input file is made of several flags and uh, several uh, blocks so uh, we can also view the input file that we are creating with this uh, gui 
uh, for the matter there are different uh, GUIs available as well like uh, PWGUI is another open source GUI that you can use uh, with Espresso so basically uh, here you see the system of this uh, card so and system uh, this is specifying A uh, the lattice parameters A and the C because this is a hexagonal lattice two dimensional hexagonal lattice so I brav is the number uh, bravais lattice number uh, that uh, quantum espresso uses to identify the type of lattice so it is set to 4 which is correct uh, number of atoms two atoms are there in the unit cell type both are carbon so n type is 1 n t y p is 1 and uh, you see the atomic species carbon this is the atomic weight and uh, this UPF is the uh, pseudo potential file that is going to be used for the calculation it also shows the atomic positions but uh, the advantage with the GUI is you don't have to write all these things uh, on the code uh, on your own uh, this GUI does it for you so before we start the calculation one thing is uh, very important uh, because it's a two dimensional material and uh, we are doing a plane wave DFT so we must make sure that there is uh, sufficient space on both on the bottom and top of the simulation cell so for that I have to do something uh, to increase the size of the cell so I can go uh, to this so called modeler so in this module uh, what we have is we can uh, modify the cell we can scale it and uh, to make it uh, larger on the out of plane direction because there we don't want to have uh, image forces or uh, image interactions in our calculation so uh, easy way to do that is put you see the supercell block out here and in scaling I put 2 then I build so uh, a slight disadvantage is that it sort of repeats uh, the structure so uh, I am having a only a single layer of graphene so I will delay it these two I will delete this selected atom the extra layer that got created because I enlarged the supercell and now I want to move this uh, two atoms so I will right click and select all the atoms and here you have the translation of the cell in the C vector I will try to put it somewhere right in the middle of the volume so now we have uh, quite a sufficient vacuum on uh, the top and the bottom of the uh, bottom of the material and we will now export this uh, configuration made with the modeler for our input file so reflect on input file and select this option so now we see that my input file has been uh, modified a bit and uh, I just look at the input file what it is so uh, see the dimension of the cell in the C direction has increased and accordingly the uh, positions and all these things they have been updated so what I can do now is uh, to set up a calculation so this is uh, the different blocks we have for the calculation and this is uh, right now we are in the geometry section so we have uh, the lattice uh, type we can set A, C these are all correct so we don't need to do anything right now uh, I can click here and I can go to SCF because SCF is the uh, self consistent uh, field uh, calculation that uh, quantum espresso has to run before uh, going on to band structure or any other type of calculation so we will look at these things so uh, again you can just uh, look at the input file side by side so uh, and this button is used to update the input file every time you make some changes round about here so th these are different uh, blocks of the calculation the different flags or cards as you may 
want to call them and uh, controlling the calculation from this uh, you have to uh, in fact set uh, different kind of values uh, for different uh, materials uh, this uh, restart mode yes or no basically this flag is uh, whether to use uh, some data from the previous step if some uh, earlier calculation had stopped or something like that uh, so we don't really need it here this is the maximum allowed time for the simulation to run it's a small calculation so we don't need to change anything uh, if you want to read the force and the stress uh, on the system uh, yes uh, you can change these cards and you can immediately see that the, there are two different uh, uh, different uh, lines in the code appear in the control block uh, tprn4 and t stress so these are set to true uh, if you are not using a gui you uh, mind it you have to uh, input these things on your own uh, so plane wave uh, cutoff this is a very uh, important parameter so Usually for this kind of small system, depending upon the material, uh, I would say 50 read work is okay for uh, this system. Uh, and also, uh, I would like to uh, use a rule of thumb for the cut of charge. That is four times of this uh, 50. So I will use like 200 read works. So that's. Uh, what it is k points so basically you will be using a monkos pack k grid and uh, because it's a 2d material you don't need any repetitions on the z direction so you use n cross n cross n so uh, for bulk material but uh, for a 2d like n cross n cross 1 so uh, this is like uh, 6 6 and 1 so kx ky and this is 1 and uh, I'll use a smearing for the occupation and I can set it to different uh, type of smearing but uh, the most uh, standard one is to use the Fermi Dirac smearing. Smearing width is okay, uh, 0.01 Rydberg is okay. Uh, so this set of, sets up the SCF calculation. I can look at the input file also if I want. Uh, if you want you can uh, export this input file, uh, copy it uh, onto a text editor and uh, uh, save it for uh, use with some, uh, say you want to use it on Linux or other system uh, or you have a cluster where Bura is not installed. So for that case, uh, you directly have to use the Espresso in fi input file and for that you can uh, download it, uh, you can save this file in a text editor. but. Uh, we will do it on this system only. So once this SCF card is set up, I will set up the band calculation. Now this number of bands is how many bands I want to calculate. So let's set it to some uh, larger value, say 50 bands. And here you see there are certain information uh, uh, buttons also available. So let's set this to 50 can always keep looking at the input file at the same time and uh, how are you going to sample the brilliant zone so I prefer to use the crystal type coordinates and you see that it does in fact change the change the uh, input file accordingly you just have to press the refresh button to update now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these uh, points because I'm going to sample this thing in the brillant zone path gamma m k gamma. So uh, right here uh, we can use the symbolic uh, way but we can also input the particular uh, value like 0, 0, 0 for gamma uh, 0.33, 0 for k. 0, 0 0.50 for m and so on but uh, you can also just use the symbols so this gg is the gamma point m k gamma and additional points i don't really need right now because i'm looking for this uh, sampling path which is standard for 2d hexagonal materials uh, 
so I'm going to delete all these things and we have our file you see uh, how it reflects on the input file so right now we are sampling over only the 4k points so now the band calculation is also set up and we can now proceed to the DOS calculation so k points uh, keep in mind if you are doing a DOS calculation try to have the k points more uh, than the k point setting for uh, the SCF calculation so because for better convergence uh, so uh, here I'm using 11 11 this 2 is not needed because basically uh, it's a 2d system I will use 50 bands for the sampling uh, of the DOS and occupation smearing type uh, of smearing I would again set this to Fermi Dirac but not here on the plotting uh, uh, flag because uh, there you simple Gaussian broadening is uh, good enough for plotting uh, so maximum energy from 50 to minus 50 it is set but I don't really need that so I'll do say from 10 to minus 10 electron volts and you can also change the units so very uh, useful interface so now all this uh, input files are ready so what I am going to do is I have to run the calculation so for that I will go to this menu on the right hand bottom side uh, sorry the left hand uh, bottom left hand side and here I have uh, this uh, run okay so I will put this run button and it will prompt me to save the project which I will so it saves in a directory so I will say one this is the name I'm giving it so if I look at this uh, file this graph one folder so it has created a number of uh, input files uh, for espresso the default output for, uh, input format is dot in for espresso and we have the band DOS geometry uh, I'm not going to do molecular dynamics optimization this calculation so uh, geometry is just the geometry file of the system uh, so what I will be mostly using this espresso SCF this DOS espresso DOS espresso band so how these files look like just take a look at this uh, so you can open them in gedit and see for yourself uh, the pseudo potentials come bundled with uh, the espresso distribution here so we don't need to do really uh, anything but if you are using a, a, your um, quantum espresso on a Linux system uh, which you have uh, compiled uh, yourself uh, because espresso is an open source and downloadable code and for advanced users uh, it is better to use that uh, so uh, in that case you can also modify these uh, input uh, parameters in the file and copy it on your uh, cluster or other system where you want to run uh, but here uh, I'm not going to do that here I'm just going to uh, run it on my local system uh, because it is a small calculation it, it can run on a desktop but for uh, larger systems and more complex calculations uh, high power uh, high performance uh, system is uh, at least a very good workstation or if you have access to a cluster that is uh, recommended now uh, now very important uh, point here uh, is to think about the order of calculation so Whenever we are going to run a calculation on quantum espresso, it is important first to do the SCF calculation. So first step is to do the SCF, select the SCF job type, SCF, and we are going to run that. So it is showing this SCF calculation is running. It is red uh, because uh, the calculation is still running. So it will turn green uh, after some time when the calculation is done. It's done. So I go back to the input file and I can see the results right here so I can see the log file I can see if there are any errors in the log file uh, so it seems it has 
completed without any errors, which is good. I can go back. And now I will uh, go back once again into the main window. And again, uh, now I can run the band structure calculation because my SCF has been completed. So I will go to the band calculation. I will run that. And in a moment I will have the results for the band structure calculation. So this uh, part will turn green when the band structure calculation is done. So what I have done is I already have uh, uh, done uh, the calculations uh, in a separate file to save time in this video. So this is uh, my saved file from the previous calculations. Let this run, but I can view the results already which I have calculated. Uh, so I can go, uh, this is, uh, go to the results and we see that so many things are there. There's a DOS, this band and uh, these things are available. So I can click on the band and see the band structure. I have set like uh, minus 10 to, uh, you can change this uh, vertical axis uh, to any value like uh, so minus 10 to plus 10 uh, I can increase or decrease so it's okay to see minus 10 to 10 and we see the famous uh, Dirac point of graphene at k point of the Brillouin zone I can take a screenshot of this if I want to use somewhere in a uh, paper or somewhere uh, these results I can also take the screenshots go back we look at the DOS and uh, this shows us the DOS density of states and here also we can change the minimum and the maximum value up to which we will look at. So you can also uh, in the band structure, I go back to band structure now. So in the band structure you can also uh, to make it more uh, colorful you can have, you can see the symbols. So the symbols actually represent the actual calculated points. Uh, and uh, the lines are the interpolated lines. You can uh, use much more number of points uh, in your in input file. Um, but uh, the fact remains uh, that uh, right here, if you see uh, one of the inputs, uh, so I'll show you. Uh, if I look at the espresso band, I can modify this file and I can have many more uh, points for the sampling. Uh, I can change this 20 to 50, 60, anything uh, to have much higher number of points but to save time uh, for the example uh, I have done this. So with, you can export this band structure as well. Yeah, this another screenshot whichever way you like. You can save it. So uh, this uh, sort of uh, concludes uh, this short tutorial for calculating the band structure of graphene and in the upcoming tutorials I will uh, show you some other 2D materials, uh, more calculations and uh, more results. Uh, so uh, goodbye for now and uh, take care. Thank you.